Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of this STM32 beginner series where we'll explore the fascinating world of microcontrollers. In this series, we'll dive into what microcontrollers are, I will introduce you to the STM32 F41RE and I will guide you through setting up your own development environment. My name is Ali and you are watching CGHQ. Okay, so let's start with the basics. What exactly is a microcontroller? So a microcontroller is a compact integrated circuit designed to govern a specific operation in an embedded system. So unlike a general purpose computer, which can perform a wide variety of tasks, a microcontroller is designed to perform specific functions. Microcontrollers are often compared to microprocessors. While both are integral to computing devices, microcontrollers include additional components like memory, input-output ports, and timers, so everything in just one package. This integration makes microcontrollers perfect for controlling small devices and systems such as home appliances and even robots. Now let's talk about the STM32F41RE, which is the star of our series. This development board is from ST Microelectronics. It is based on the ARM Cortex M4 core. It is known for its balance between power efficiency and performance, making it a popular choice for both beginners and professionals. The STM32F41RE operates at a speed up to 84 MHz. It has 512 kilobytes of flash memory and 96 kilobytes of SRAM. It supports a wide range of peripherals, including GPIOs, which are basically these pins over here. It also has ADCs, timers, and communication interfaces like USART, SPI, and I2C. You don't really need to know what any of those things mean right now, because as we progress through the series, uh, we will be covering each and every single one of those things I just mentioned. An integrated development environment which, is, uh, which stands for IDE in short, is a software application that provides a comprehensive environment for software development. It typically includes a set of tools and features designed to simplify and streamline the process of writing, testing, and debugging code. So STM32 microcontrollers are supported by a large diverse community of IDE providers, as you can see on this slide. Uh, this, ecosy this ecosystem is vital for developers as it offers a wide range of tools tailored to different needs, skill levels, and project requirements. So for the duration of this series, we will be using the STM32 Cube IDE, which is developed by ST Micro Electronics because it is the official IDE for STM32 microcontrollers, which makes it a popular choice among beginners and professionals. To download the IDE, you just need to go to Google and search STM32 Cube IDE. And then you can go to this uh, first link provided by ST Microelectronics. When you, get to the when you get onto the website, you just need to scroll down to this section that says Get Software. So here, there's a bunch of different links uh, for different uh, computer operating systems. So there's links for Linux, there's links for Mac OS, and for Windows as well. So just click on Get Latest for what ever system that you're using and then read through the license agreement and scroll all the way down and then click accept so after you click accept you're gonna be prompted to either download the software as a guest or create a my st account after you click on one of these two options you should receive an email from st microelectronics with your account information and the download link However, I'm not going to do that right now because I already have Cube IDE installed on my system. But if you guys would like me to do a detailed tutorial on how to download the software from beginning to end, you can just let me know down in the comments and I'll do that for you guys. After you've installed the STM32 Cube IDE and you want to start programming your microcontroller, the development workflow for STM32 microcontrollers integrates several tools provided by ST Microelectronics, each designed for specific stages of the software development process. The journey typically begins with STM32 Cube MX, which is a graphical tool that allows you to configure microcontroller peripherals and generate initialization code. 
in STM32 Cube MX, uh, you start by selecting uh, the specific STM32 microcontroller model that you have. Then uh, you configure the required peripherals and then you map them to the specific pins. And then you can also set up other parameters like clock speeds and interrupt priorities. When you're done setting all of this up inside the STM32 Cube MX, you move on to the STM32 Cube IDE. This is an integrated development environment which is used to write, compile, and debug the application code. Here, you basically import the project generated by STM32 Cube MX into STM32 Cube IDE, and then you add uh, your application logic on top of the generated initialization code. The IDE then facilitates error checking, compiling the code into a binary file, and debugging with tools that allow you to step through your code uh, by setting up breakpoints and inspecting variables. Once the code is developed and tested, STM32 Cube Programmer is then used to program the compiled binary file onto the STM32 microcontroller. This tool connects to the microcontroller via either a USB cable, an external ST-Link that you can buy or other, in or other interfaces. This allows you to load and flash the binary file onto the microcontroller device itself. And then after flashing the device, the application can then be run or further debugged as needed. There are other utilities like the STM32 Cube Monitor, which is used for real-time monitoring and debugging of the microcontroller uh, during runtime. This tool connects to the microcontroller and monitors selected parameters. This offers data visualization through graphs and dashboard. In this episode, we have covered the basics of microcontrollers. We have introduced the STM32A41RE, and we have talked about the IDE that we are, go that we are going to use throughout the series. So in the next episode, we'll dive into GPIOs, and we'll finally write the first program to blink an LED using this microcontroller over here. So thank you so much for joining me in this introductory episode. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe uh, to stay updated with the latest content in the channel. Okay, see you in the next episode.